From the Bid Pixel Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Phone Booth Fighting, a twice weekly podcast brought to you absolutely free by our fine sponsors that we will give some love to here momentarily after I introduce you to the stars. Myself, Richard Hunter, and the man on the Skype machine all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Who are you, sir? It's Frank Mir. That's Frank Mir, the two-time UFC heavyweight champion, current Bellator heavyweight contender. And Frank, what a day you picked to uh, not be here in the studio because we have uh, a couple of lovely guests in studio. First of all, returning to the program uh, by... I mean, I could say popular demand, but I think that would be an understatement. I think <laughs> that we we literally were just holding off our angry listeners at the gates of the Bent Pixel Studios uh, long enough to get her back in here before they uh, launched an attack. It is uh, Jesse Jess, Jessica Rose Clark, UFC women's uh, strawweight, flyweight. Uh, flyweight, sorry, 125 pounds straw flyweight. Uh, contender. I have to get used to saying flyweight because that's a new thing in the UFC. So anyway, and her uh, sparring partner who is getting her ready for her fight coming up with Jessica I, which is going to be a uh, weekend after this coming one, right? Yeah, it's next weekend. 23rd. 23rd. Yeah, 23rd over in uh, Singapore, yep. right? Uh, Jess Fraser is uh, here with us. So thanks for coming by. G'day. Thanks for filling in for Frank. It's going to be, <laughs> let me tell you something. This Australia is a very big market for us. Um, outside of uh, the U.S. and Canada, England and Australia are our two biggest countries in terms of listenership. So uh, uh, I know you guys, Jesse's very popular on the show. I know you guys are going to be very popular. We got Frank over there in Australia, and I'm even going to do one better for all our Aussie listeners. I'm going <laughs> to upload this thing in the middle of the night so they Ooh, get it first. So yeah. They get it straight up. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So they're going to get it first. <clears throat> all right. Everything, are we coming in to you, uh, loud and clear over there, Frank? Yeah, I hear you guys plenty, man. Okay. Now, what what are you doing over there? You've got ACB, because, you know, Frank's color commentary for ACB. But we found out, uh, ladies, that they've apparently booked Frank in a couple hours to fight some little kid or something. What, you, <laughs> what do they have you doing? Explain to, to, to Jess and Jesse what they've got you doing over there. Um, well... You know, I don't ask too many details because yeah. I'll forget them anyways. <laughs> yeah. But basically, I know that there's a child that was being bullied and stuff, and there, there's some kind of program they have them on the radio show or, or talk show, and they're going to, uh, there's me, I think another rugby player are going to come out and just, you know, they, they asked me if I would help out and, you know, interact with them and stuff. I'm like, yeah, no problem. And then a couple of days ago, they sent me a clip of, uh, was it was a Jason Moa, Momoa? I can't yeah. pronounce his last name. The Game of Thrones and, guy. Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. Aquaman. <laughs> And uh, and uh, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel, and they're playing some kind of card game where it's like war, you know, and the high card wins, and then the mm -hmm. loser gets a glass of water splashed in his face. I'm like, okay, you got to do this with this kid. I'm like, all right. But they asked <laughs> if I'd be okay with it. I'm like, so I was just throw the glass. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay, so let's maybe this is an Australian approach that I don't quite understand, ladies. It it what I'm hearing here is there's a a, a young Australian kid who's being bullied. So the idea was to bring Frank Mir over to throw water in his face. Is so that to get a, a professional fighter to bully him. Yeah, is that? That sounds like something we do. Okay. It makes sense. Down under logic. Yeah. Uh, down under <laughs> logic. That's not to be termed as a phrase like that. Down under logic. <laughs> now, could it be possible that you misunderstood Frank the 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 ground rules? Because what I would hate to have is some sort of international incident. Like he's misunderstood. <laughs> he shows up, throws water on the kid and next yeah. thing you know he's deported <laughs> i was worried about that because i mean you know they're sitting there going ah, like, the guy mirror just came down there and started throwing water in his <laughs> face so it, it was done via text so i have a screenshot to okay. know they're like look good. you guys told me to do this so good <laughs> electronic uh, trail okay. evidence yes okay now the rugby player do we have his because i'm not up on my rugby players the only rugby player i can name is russell crowe <laughs> um, but maybe, maybe uh, Jesse. I can go off Jess screen real quick that. and pull up on my WhatsApp if you guys want to. Well, that's okay. That's all right. Do, do you guys know rugby at all? Like no. who, who the big play? Yeah, you don't. You don't not either. Really. You What's know, rugby? Uh, oh, really? Is it not? <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that a big? That's a big thing in Australia, yeah. though, right? Just not yeah, for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. 
Yeah. So you really don't, or you're you're. Uh, I don't watch anything. That's your dry wit. I you're like me. Okay. So <laughs> I only know combat sports. Well, see, I barely know what's going on in my own sport. Oh, okay. Let alone other people's sport. Yeah. yeah. Do you? Are you the type of pro athlete? Because I've known other pro athletes that are like this, where they had the physical attributes to do it. They like competing, but that doesn't necessarily make them a fan. Like, is that kind yeah. of more for you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I wouldn't say I'm a fan. Like, yeah. I'm a fan of certain people. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I'm a fan of the sport i just love it i I love competing and hurting people and getting hurt you know yeah (laughs) i don't go out of my way to watch it or be involved in it outside of my own specific training i'm pretty good at that too but i find uh my my the pain i inflict is more emotional (laughs) Uh, it it tends to be more like in relationships and things like that i don't know how i would really do in combat sports but i do enjoy (laughs) following it um, so, uh, ex- introduce us to your new friend, though, uh, Jesse, <laughs> because... I'm not I mean, a I, life I, partner, I, that's... Yeah, I know... Old way way <laughs> I know you, thought we were like, wow, this is a weird twist. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys you are... Uh, on this one. <laughs> I, I, I know you guys are training partners, but, uh, since we're meeting her for the first time... She's on your guys' Friday. new friend. Yeah, this right. is okay, you Jess, guys Jess and I have been friends for, like, six years. She yep. runs, um, the largest... Uh, all-female jiu-jitsu group in Australia. Oh, so okay. she's like kind of the, the front woman for that, for com- uh, allowing women in Australia to get to know each other and, and have female-specific events and having more equality in, in events in general. So okay. she's a jiu-jitsu black belt. Um, cool. I've known her for a long time. Like Jessica I has been doing a lot of shitty jiu-jitsu. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so I brought <laughs> Jess out to help me out. Yeah. And Terrible name for a dojo, by the way. Shitty jujitsu. I mean, I'm, the upside is the domain is probably available, yeah. but the downside is I don't know. You could know. probably pick and choose who you got to train there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Turn that microphone just a little more toward yourself, right there. There you go. It's very directional. Okay. Good. Um, cool. So you guys now are you naturally uh, a, a flyweight as a well? Brunette. Just flyweight. Oh no. No, okay. I'm a bit bigger. I'm I'm closer to. She's actually not. She's very short. Yeah, I'm I'm closer to Jess's pre. Probably band weight. Cut. Yeah. Wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so lightweight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. so so you. I guys look spelt though, don't I? Well, yeah. I was gonna say no. When you guys are coming up the <laughs> stairs, yeah, I, I, I think you do. Um, okay, very cool. Now, do you guys know each other prior to Vegas or? Yeah, or yeah we. Definitely. I've known her for six years. Oh, all the way. Yeah. Okay, so all the way back yeah. in Australia, and everything. Cool. Now, were you already over here in Vegas, Jess, or did you come over just for the camp and the train and all that? Specifically for the camp. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So I put in a camp before this camp because yeah. yeah Training with Jesse every day is not something you just walk into. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this is going to be easy, you know. So yeah. knowing that I'm going to be a sparring partner each day, like, yeah. yeah, put in a lot of work before I came out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna embarrass Jesse just a little bit further because Frank, I, I want you to back me up on this. <laughs> We've been doing this. Show. Do you realize, Frank, we're one episode away from our 200th show? I was starting to think of that the other yep. day when you, you were trying to figure out what show it was and you said it was like the 190s. I was like, yep. shit, man. I know. So you should do Turn number 200 it. nude. I think that should be a thing for number 200. Okay, are you, you're you looking at me, but are you talking to Frank or do you <laughs> mean both of us? <laughs> <laughs> I just need everyone in the studio. <laughs> oh, boy. Boy. Mikey's used to it. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> that was a Mike's stepped for it already. Yeah. Yeah. Mikey, uh, Mikey actually might do a better job filming that than he does uh, our clothed episodes. Um, but what the what I what I was gonna uh, say, I mean, uh, embarrass you just a little bit further is Frank, back me up on this. In almost two hundred episodes, we have never had the 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 feedback, the demand to get somebody back on the show than we have you, Jesse. Why would that embarrass me? Well, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'd maybe, maybe, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're an <laughs> egomaniac. You're just like, yeah, yeah, maybe. bring it on, bring it on. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, did you, um, maybe you saw that too. I think I people were tagging bit. you on your yeah, Twitter. Yeah, I saw and all a little that. bit. That yeah. was pretty cool. You were um, a real hit. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, you could. Congratulations, I, guys. Yeah, well, th- yeah, thank you. Congratulations on having me. Uh, <laughs> Well, I think, though, Frank, that, that what made her such a success, now I'm building this up. We better have one hell of an episode here this time. But <laughs> yeah, um, it's it, we always find that we do best with people who are just versatile in conversation. Like, mm-hmm. they can just kind of fit in with whatever's coming up, whatever we're talking about and everything. really makes for the best kind of conversation. So you're very well, good. Yeah, I'm so too lazy to outline the show. Yeah. So that's why <laughs> yeah. every time we start talking beforehand, I'm like, dude. 
Let's not say shit twice, <laughs> just tape. Right. Oh, wait, he sent me a very detailed email for the one I was supposed to do last week. It I was did. great. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah, and then nothing for this one. <laughs> well, here's what See, happened. See, he doesn't even bother yeah. sending me in. No, no. They won't read them. <laughs> no, here's, here's what happened with that. That episode last week, I was afraid it was just going to be you and I. Um. Uh, and so that was going to be like co-hosting, you know. And actually, and also there were a lot of, it was a lot of fight analysis yeah, too, yeah, I think, because yeah. of UFC 220. In fact, let's just start that, because Frank and I actually on the last episode broke down UFC 225 and everything, but I'll I'll uh, defer to you guys for a second, because that, for some reason, Chicago for the UFC translated to let's get a lot of Australians together. Yeah, that was it? weird. It was weird the it was way awesome, all that worked but out. it was yeah. weird, yeah. Yeah, well, first of all, that main event is like the greatest fight I've seen in maybe a Dude, few years, right? I fucking, man, I nearly cried so many times, like I felt my heart stopped yeah. <laughs> every time Robbie got knocked I was like fuck get back up yeah <laughs> I was so happy when he won <laughs> yeah yeah that was really and I was telling Frank on the last episode it's not often that well first of all it's not often that uh, a sequel plays out really exactly the opposite of the first because yeah. the you know the first fight was uh, Romero strong at the beginning and then Whitaker coming on in the end and and this one was you know Romero actually having his better rounds later in the fight yeah. overall Romero's sneaky though yeah he's so sneaky in every fight he does in every fight he has and I like I was watching him just sit back in guard and I'm like you're a fucking motherfucker mm-hmm. like I knew what he was doing yeah. he was trying to gas on me out he was up to something yeah yeah he's shifty yeah he is he's very <laughs> he's, he's very a shifty he is man. he can be uh, uh, can be shifty and then uh, the other thing too is I think it's also not often that the sequel is better yeah. than the first fight and I I think this one had much more drama to it yeah yeah it, w- it was very dramatic <laughs> and and how about this and and you guys tell me what you think about this but I also think that Maybe the nicest thing you can say about a fight where the first two fights have the same outcome is when can we do this a third time? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think a third one needs to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, unless Romero goes back and has a few more fights and then comes back up. Because, like, oh, yeah, realistically, right. he shouldn't have gotten that shot again anyway. Yeah. And I just think, like, I don't know. I have so much faith in Robbie. But I think he needs to have a different fight. Mm. Like I don't want to see that a third time. Yeah, it's dumb. Like if they were one and one, then for sure. But he's not. He's two and zero. So maybe not right away. But I also think it's one of those things where it's a division that maybe right at this moment doesn't just have a real long line of yeah. compelling matchups. So there's kind of yeah. a. It's not like the lightweight division where you're like you know throw a dart and uh, you know pick yeah. two of any two of these ten guys and this is going to be real interesting yeah that's what i mean like they should give romero a few fights and give robbie a couple more and then mm-hmm. like then bring them back together but not yeah. not an immediate thing yeah yeah makes sense uh who else what else did you guys think megan anderson ty tui vasa what'd you think i love ty yeah i remember yeah i remember like i remember going to shows like shitty little shows mm-hmm. in penrith western sydney and watching Ty come out to call me maybe and like get <laughs> twenty second knockouts, like I love him. He used to come to my gym in Brisbane with Mark Hunt. And uh-huh. Yeah, he's such a like such a good kid. So talented. So like works so hard. He used to be lazy as shit. Like, but very clearly isn't now. He's half the size he used to be. And you know, I, like I don't think anyone expected him to be able to go three rounds. Like I was surprised he went three rounds. Yeah. Uh, I was super impressed with that. I was glad to see him kind of get to that stage you know especially with someone like Andre I thought that was a really amazing fight yeah a close fight a different outcome than what you've seen and and honestly that's what you need to see with a guy that comes in with that kind of record but yet at the same time hasn't yet faced you know top 10 competition and things like that you kind of need to see somebody tested so you're like oh okay they really do belong here you know especially because he's so young yeah you know I thought yeah I thought that was beautiful that was that was the best way that fight could have happened. Because if he hadn't knocked Andre out, they would have been like, oh, Andre's just old, you know, he's yeah. past it. Like, Ty's never had a real fight. So mm-hmm. I thought that was perfect for his career. Yeah. Now, Frank and I also wonder aloud a lot about what to do with this women's featherweight division. Because <laughs> it's something that is uh, obviously centered around Chris Cyborg. Holly, you know, has has done well, but she's also uh, somebody who can go back and forth mm-hmm. between bantamweight and featherweight. Megan's a natural featherweight; she's needed now. But it, apart from that, like, where can we find some other? Uh, do you guys have any other six feet tall? 
female Australians walking around no. we could draft? <laughs> like where no. where no, are we gonna find where are we gonna find more people for that division? What do you guys Man, think? Bellator's got some really good forty fivers. Mm-hmm. They do. But uh I know that um, they're about to do the tough 145 women's house mm. and there were some Bellator fighters who were considering it but couldn't get out of their contract. So um, I think that's very smart of Bellator to keep them yeah. because they have got some talent in that division over there. And I think that if they keep their girls in that division, maybe they need to start paying them a little bit more to keep them there. Um, I think they'll end up cornering the market with that division because like I, the girls that I know of that are going through the tough house and I, I like I know quite a few names there's a few girls that I've already fought that are going through fuck me they suck like none of them honestly none of them are gonna get to where Chris is at yeah and I thought it was insane that Chris was there at the tryouts like that would scare the shit out of me if I was <laughs> going just hanging out. I was trying out for the tough house like, <laughs> yeah because she like there was photos of her with all these girls trying out and she's six times the size of all of them and they're all trying to compete to face her you know but yeah i just uh, there's just there's just not enough girls in that division there are some talented ones but it's just not deep enough and i don't i think there's such a huge division there's chris who's had who's had like numerous fights multiple titles you know it's only lost once um and then everyone else is kind of 10 fights or below mm-hmm. so there's mm-hmm. just there's no in between ground yeah yeah, so. yeah. Well, and Frank, I think maybe you can expound on this. You know, we have said for the longest time that what we really felt was needed in the UFC was Jesse's division, the 125, long before a 145. Because yeah. we felt like at that point there were a whole bunch of girls that were just shut out of their natural weight class at 125, right, Frank? No, 100%. I mean, 125 is like being a, a welterweight for the men's side. I think it's actually right in the middle of the average size of, of more female athletes. And anytime you do that, just like the reason why 55 pounds and 70 pounds, you know, 170 is so stacked on the men's side, more men walk around at that weight class. So do you have a much larger pool to pull from? You have a lot more women walking around weighing only 140 pounds that can fight at flyweight than you do having women who, you know, walking around at 170 who are good athletes and want to fight. Uh, they can make flyweight, you know, so that's or uh, featherweight. So I think that's why. And, and it, I understand why the UFC did it. You know, they had a named commodity in Chris Cyborg, who is, you know, you know, she's a superstar, you know, in the making, you know, you know but she just has nobody else to fight, you know. So it's uh, it, they definitely, I think, put the wagon in front of the horse and trying to get this division going. And, and when they made that division before they made the, the, uh, the girls flyweight, I thought that was just a huge mistake. Yeah, because how many times do you want to see her beating up people who have no business being there? Yeah, because yeah, even when you do have her in a fight, if you can't get somebody that seems somewhat, you know, uh, uh, you know, of a challenge, if you can try to market it that way, it's it's one sided, and and, and yeah. then all of a sudden now we're on the search again, and it takes a year before we can build somebody else up. There's just no depth to it whatsoever. Yeah. And they're gonna put Amanda Nunes against her, and Amanda, like realistically, Amanda's not much bigger than me, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So it's still. Amanda might be super technical and she's really a brilliant athlete, but Chris is twice her size. It's still dumb. It's still a dumb matchup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank, let me catch you up on a little bit of news uh, since you left the country. Um, my uh, my brothel boss is now the uh, the Republican nominee for uh, State Assembly District Thirty Six. He won. <laughs> He went, well, I was having lunch with Brent, and uh, he seemed to felt that that was going to be the case. Well, it was talking about. It was very, very close. I mean, out in those rural counties, it's decided by like like less than a thousand votes. I think. It's well, I know incredible. his opponent was not so, very well liked by the Republican establishment out there because you know. Right. I think well, they said he went on record for having some of the highest tax. Uh, what's that? If you owned a brothel, wouldn't you be more well liked than the other guy? Oh, it's such a slippery slope. Jess, let me get you caught up on this. I work at a whorehouse, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, during the day, you see. Uh, uh, while uh, it's a sentence I wasn't expecting to hear. Oh, right. there's more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah while well, yeah. we're waiting for a podcast well, to actually, pay the bills, they're they're here in Brisbane, don't they? Don't you guys? It's not illegal in Australia, right? Uh, we have a lot of them around Parliament in Canberra. I think that, that I think that brothels are it's like decriminalized. decriminalized. So it's, it's a hotel yeah. that you hire by the hour. I'm giving, I'm giving it air quotes now. Sure. Yeah. It's not legalized, but it's tolerated. It's kinda like you, nothing really yeah. happens to you for doing it. As long as you're doing it in 
the areas where you know it's going to be tolerated. Yes. Yeah. Most of those areas are near our politicians. Yes, yes, makes <laughs> makes a lot of sense. <laughs> well, uh, this was uh, this this was a, a a difficult one for me because it's it's funny because I'm getting all these tweets from our listeners who know that I work for this guy congratulating me <laughs> on this and he and I are political opposites I'm as liberal as you will find and so he and I go head to head all the time on this political so which listen part of this is just like Dennis loves the spotlight you know what I mean so he's kind of like uh, what does everybody think around? Uh, you know, what's yeah. what's what's going to put on the best show for you guys? What do you you know what, what are you down with? Conservative politics? Okay, me too. Here we go. So he ran for state assembly out in this uh, rural area, and uh, actually won. And it was all over the national news today. Like it was uh, it was making all the political talk shows about this guy. That owns a, they were calling him a brothel kingpin. <laughs> Yeah, and so he will now actually run in November in the uh, general election. How did Jones do? Uh, He lost. Yeah, he lost his lieutenant governor race, yeah. Yeah. I just realized your Jesus Christ poster was signed. Oh, yeah, it is. It's autographed, (laughs) uh, which makes it a real collectible. A lot of... A lot of Prove people. It wasn't. A lot of people <laughs> think, guys, that uh, because uh, Frank and I are outspoken atheists, that we put that uh, blasphemous artwork up there. But actually, no, it was uh, Forrest Griffin and uh, <laughs> T.J. Lavin uh, left that in here for us. So we just never moved it. That we're doesn't ca- surprise me either. Yeah, we're we're kind of afraid to uh, to touch it. And then uh, <laughs> what uh, uh, Jesse wanted me to uh, explain to Jesse here, I think right before we went on the air. Uh, I'll just segue from the brothel to this, is uh, she wanted me to explain what our uh, producer, Mikey, does for a living. He shoots porn. So he's like a... <laughs> like he's the guy with the camera. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So this is a den of in- like iniquity. <laughs> it is a den of iniquity. Thanks. Ironically, Thanks invite, ironically <laughs> Frank Mir is kind That's of... That's why he's st- in Brisbane. He's yeah. actually got out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> His wife, his wife actually makes him go to Australia <laughs> to tape every podcast, so he's as far away from this as possible. He's got to be on the other side of the world. Yeah. Have you taped any porn lately, Mikey? How's porn taping going? Um, I've, I've been doing a lot of stagehand work lately. Um, okay. My boss moved back to L.A. Okay. Um, Is that like fluffy? Er, no. Yeah. If I had a nickel for every time. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do they? That, that's like when she gets asked. So, are there any rules in that fighting? Yeah. That you do? Are there? Do, do does anybody do fluffing anymore? No, that's not a thing. It's a lost art. It, I don't Damn. think. I don't know how. If it was ever really there, maybe in like the Boogie Nights era. Yeah. yeah. Like, but not. Not since the, I, I would say definitely not since. I was I really hoping that it was going to be a viable career choice once no. I retire. Fluffing. <laughs> Wouldn't yeah. you just use fluffing. Viagra? Just, uh, just well, quietly, yeah, like uh, literally quietly. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like, isn't See, there drugs for that? Well, like, yeah, no, there is, and and that's <laughs> why drugs that's taking <laughs> over people's jobs. <laughs> that's why now, uh, Mikey, back me up here. Uh, <laughs> that's why now you see like good-looking dudes in porn. Because back what? in the in the <laughs> do yeah. I? <laughs> yeah, you know, well, come on now. Like you'll see the in shape guys, you know. Because back in the seventies, the eight, there was a reason why Ron Jeremy was in every porn you ever saw. Because there were only like four or five guys yeah. that could naturally do what those guys were right. doing, you know. And <laughs> now, yeah, now like I said, you got the pharmaceutical enhancements, so uh, now mm. anyone, anyone can do it. PDs and porn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, is there I'm a, getting that T-shirt, Frank? <laughs> Is there, is there a chance of shooting any? I mean, are you available for hire, Mike? Wait, are you trying to hire him for yeah, one? No, I, well, um, summer's pretty slow for my other work, so I'm probably going to um, dial up, get the old Rolodex out and uh, see if I can <laughs> get a job. That sounds okay. yeah. like right. it needs a wash. Well, hey, while we're, while we're throwing it out there, we are, uh, we are hiring at the Alien Cat House. It's summer, and uh, we got some positions open for the ladies, so uh, hit me up if uh, anybody's looking Stop to... Stop looking uh, at me while you say that. Uh, <laughs> you, you'd be a big hit. That pays better than a fluffer. I mean. No. Here's the thing. You, you would be a big hit, but even just as casually as I know you up to this point, I I wouldn't I would try everything I could to talk you out of that. It's it's not going to be a hard argument. Okay. Thank you though. Yeah. No. I because it I always tell people it's there's no such thing as free money. You know they hear about the amounts of money and they're like oh my god that's incredible you know it's like life changing money for that and yeah, I yeah you're getting fucked you so. are yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Just it's not unlike fighting. I always I, it's funny. I actually this is an actual talk I have with the girls. I will sit them down when I talk to them about their financial planning. Frank's heard this speech. <laughs> and I say, listen, you know I work with a lot of fighters when I'm not here at the whorehouse, right? And the girls will say, yeah, yeah I know. And I say, uh, you know, what you do is not unlike cage fighting. I said, you can be the champion of the world, but even when you're holding the title and even <laughs> when you win, every time you fight – you get hit in the head pretty hard at least a couple of times, <laughs> right? There's a price to pay. And if you stay too long, you're going to start slurring your words. So I <laughs> metaphorically <laughs> encourage them I to put that. the money back. Yeah, someone, I uh, care. Someone wrote on my Twitter, I posted a photo a couple of weeks ago, and someone wrote on it, just do porn already. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. 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 And so then I was like, well, I get paid and I don't have to get fucked. So yeah, it's all right. right. And then Penthouse contacted me and said they would put me in the magazine. I'll bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, should I do it? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was like, no. <laughs> yeah. Your Twitter feed. By the way, everybody can follow uh, Jesse on Twitter at Jesse Jess. Uh, Miss Jesse Jess. Miss Jesse Jess. Mm -hmm. M-S? Miss Jesse. M-I-S-S. M-I-S-S Jesse Jess. Got it. Um, your, your Twitter, I mean, you're very engaged with fans, but it can also get pretty contentious too. Like, you're not afraid to just take somebody on yeah i like to fight but i don't oh, i don't yeah. even fight with people i just think shit is funny man yeah people write the most insane i do okay <laughs> <laughs> I she, she knows because I screenshot mm -hmm. everything yes. that gets yeah. sent to me. So it's I had <laughs> some twenty-two-year-old messaging me on Instagram, telling me that he loved me so much that he would come in his own mouth and swallow it while I watched. Oh, yep. oh, 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 <laughs> 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 like, all right, oh. I'm not sure where you're going with that one, but okay. <laughs> all right, let's 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 break this down. Um, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> I mean, that that's Van Gogh-esque in terms of Isn't someone it? trying to... Like, impress me. Yeah, and yet do something that's really, at the end of the day, yeah. pretty off-putting. So I have another guy yeah. who uh, looks very similar to you. All like, right. has long hair, a little bit of facial hair. Um, and he sends me photos of himself dressed in a schoolgirl's outfit and tells me that he can self-filate. Okay. So well, right away. Is it you? <laughs> right away, I would uh, I would ask. Well, I will only own up to having one official Twitter <laughs> account at Richard Hunter. But uh, I would ask this then: if that's the case, is uh, <laughs> is are his genitals hanging below that schoolgirl uh, skirt? Because if not, I would I would doubt his claim. Oh, I doubt it. I haven't seen them. He did yeah. send me a bent over shot of him in his skirt yeah but he had underpants on so yeah 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 i've only speaking of ron there's only one guy i've ever seen be able to do that and and ron quit being it ron jeremy quit being able to do that about 1981 i think so about 50 pounds ago oh yeah yeah, yeah. he's a guy adam carolla has a great <laughs> observation about ron he's a he adam points out that this is maybe one of the only people uh on the planet whose entire adult life has been chronicled on film naked. That's if you think awesome. about it, who else has been filmed, uh, you know, regularly naked yeah. since they were like 20 years old? Ron is one. And he said he he bets that if you strung all the clips together chronologically, you could literally watch him grow. Watch him grow. In weight. <laughs> you know, like when you, you do one of those flip books, you know, That's where right. you see the Tyler. cartoon <laughs> running. Or something? Yeah. You're going to be brave to go into that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty rough. <laughs> so anyway, that gives you an idea. Uh, welcome to the uh, welcome to the studio, okay, Jess, yep, and yep. where the the interesting uh, walks of life we all come from here. <laughs> I didn't tell her any of this when I told her to come in today. <laughs> well, see, that's what I love about you. You have you have a flair for the dramatic, Jesse. You know how to spin a good yarn. Before we get off the Twitter thing, I did want to ask you though, because th this was the one that that really uh, uh, sparked my interest. I was looking at your Twitter feed the other day, and there was some guy. That it sent you something. It was something sounded sort of disparaging, but your your reaction to it was like you had like a dossier on this guy. You're like, oh no, oh, I knew what you're, you're talking the, about. Oh yeah, well you yeah. you. Uh, he, uh, he was like in all capitals. 
I've supported you from day one since you fought Arlene Blinko. Now you like all these fake ass fans who just follow you for your tits and ass. Well, I'm leaving you. Goodbye. <laughs> yes. I was like, you're the one who gets your wife to start fights with me on Twitter and sends me inappropriate messages and writes inappropriate comments on everything. I'll stick with my fake fans. With that See one. you later. What does yeah. that mean, though? Because, you know, it's one of those things where I came in halfway through the conversation. I'm like, oh, wait, I don't understand everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. What, how did, what, does he, what do you mean he gets his wife to start? So what his, does that mean? Well, so his wife has gotten on my Twitter twice in yeah. the... Okay, wait. This guy professes to be like a, a well of knowledge about me. Okay. But everything he says, yeah. he gets wrong. Huh. Every, but he like so firmly believes that he's right. He was yeah. like, Jesse's favorite fruit is mangoes. He said that a couple months ago. And I'm like, I am really allergic to mangoes. <laughs> like, oh. it's not my favorite fruit, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like twice in the time frame that he's been following me on Twitter, which has been like three years, I think I've had it for, his wife has got on my feed mm-hmm. or send me messages like abusing me because her husband posts these weird pictures of me. He like takes my pictures yeah. and then photoshops them into other things and writes all this stuff about, you're so beautiful, you're the love of my life and like writes these really creepy poems about me and then posts them and tags mm-hmm. everyone. Mm. So then his wife is like, who the fuck are you, you slag? Yeah. Are you <laughs> talking to my husband? So she but feels like she has been drawn into some sort of love triangle. Weird, yeah. With but the that's like, I you. have another guy on instagram who does the same thing yeah who like deleted all his photos of his wife off his instagram to make it look like he was single and like started commenting on all my stuff on my friends stuff on my sponsors stuff about me commented my dog has an instagram yeah he commented on my dog's instagram was like you don't know me yet but i'm in love with your mom we're gonna get married one day so then his wife messages me and she's like i'm under the impression that my husband is either pursuing a relationship with you online or has one can you tell me i'm like dude your husband's a fucking creep and i told her everything and then he starts messaging me again and he's like why did you have to tell her stuff i haven't done anything to you why won't you follow me on instagram i've done nothing to deserve this and i'm like dude i don't fucking know you what the fuck is going on but he like followed me to a i went to phoenix for the uh, muay thai competition with the kids he followed me there and was at the competition (laughs) and i saw on his insta story like a video of where he was sitting and i avoided it like i didn't go out there until i was certain that he was gone because like i feel like i'm gonna be skinned you know what i mean like i screenshot all this shit and send it to my manager and i'm like just in case i ever go missing it's one of these three people (sighs) yeah yeah because you know the thing is if you just have even frank the 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 vaguest sense on a uh, the slightest inclination on a first date that you're going to be skinned there's probably (laughs) there's probably not going to be a second you know (laughs) Where'd this guy go wrong, Frank? You're, you know, I mean, I mean, first of all, I think the you don't know me, we haven't met, but we're going to be married might be coming on a little strong. Yeah. Where would you do it differently? <laughs> I get to know somebody on a first name basis. I don't know. I never understood that either. And, and, I, and I always get frustrated when fans do that with you. They meet you and they start talking to you. And because they see you on TV or they see you in the, in, through social media, they have a relationship that they understand who you are, but I, I wish they would get it. And like, dude, you got to flip the script here. I've never met you before a day in my life. Yeah. You would yeah. also act weird if someone that you've never known knows who you are, your birthday comes up. And as long as you're pleasant about it, it's flattering. But when people get that anger towards it, where it's like, well, like, you know, how come you don't have the same relationship back with me that, you know, the connection we have? I'm like, dude, I've never met you before. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know you. I know you think you know me, but realistically, you don't even know who I am either. Like, we've never met each other. And it, it's really crazy phenomenon nowadays with social media that just like, it's a whole new world that people are having to trudge into. Yeah, see, I would think that the the the, the right approach would be actually the exact opposite of that. You, you tell me if I'm wrong here, but I'm thinking that what you got to do is you have to, rather than come on so strong, I want to project confidence in myself. So what I want to show you is there's an interest. We're fi- maybe finding these things that we have in common, but it's kind of more of a, of a, a slow... Maybe like Damian Maya's approach to choking you out. <laughs> you know, it's not done in, a, in an instant. 
Did Frank just get tired of the show? What happened? No, I'm still here, man. I'm just. Um, He's checking. Time. I have other things I'm doing, and so I got to go back and forth. <laughs> okay, but so I'm, I'm, I think you I'm, look I'm good as a lion. Do you know that you just you just turned the camera off though? There you go. Yeah, no, I'm here. Oh, you do know yeah. that. Okay, well that's fine. He just doesn't care. Yeah, maybe we'll just turn our <laughs> camera off in a second. How about that? Bye, Frank. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys. <laughs> I'm here also working, so I'm just multitasking. Working. Yeah. Are you? What are you doing? <laughs> Researching the best way to yeah. throw water in a kid's it's face? Is that, yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing how hard I can throw before I get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've got, I got, I got to tell you about this one last yeah. one. All right. Just because I feel like this is very important, and I want all of this on record just in case something in ever case does happen. You yeah. get skinned. Um, so I, I had this one guy who I posted a photo on my Facebook, and he got on there. Someone was like, oh, Jesse, you're so pretty. And then this guy got on there and he's like, moderately attractive at best, but even better when she shuts her mouth. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it must be really horrible to live the way thinking that you do, you know, um, I'll pray for you. And then, holy shit, set off. It was like opening Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. I got message after message apologizing, telling me that he was starting a religion in my name, asking if he, should, if he could worship me with gifts and money. Um, he found my housemate on Instagram and sent her like a Google Drive link of a Bible that he'd written about worshiping me and what? asked her to read it. And she was like, she flipped out and was like, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. And uh, then I like went to get tattooed on a Saturday night and mm -hmm. I turned up and there were flowers and chocolates there for at, me at the tattoo, at the tattoo, tattoo shop from this guy how, did, you, did you like post you were going is that how he knew I'd said it like four days before uh -huh. that I was getting tattooed on Saturday and then he sent them to the tattoo shop after like I must have gotten 30 odd messages from him about worshipping me and yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. do you but, uh, yeah. Frank oh just do you have a uh, I'm, I'm out of loop too do you have a significant other no alright here's where it's gonna get weird too for you when you do start dating somebody or is because I actually, how you say you have to screenshot? Yeah. I've never done it for me personally. Like, I've had some psycho fans and I have people with tattoos of my face on them. And, you know, <laughs> they, they, there's some things that have happened, but I've always kind of been like, yeah, I can take care of myself. You know, uh, I'll take my chances. But I've actually had to have reports made because I've had a few female fans get so infatuated. And I, it, when it's directed towards me, I never thought it was a big issue. Yeah. You just, you know, whatever. But it starts turning to hatred towards for my wife. Yeah, yeah. Also, she started getting to attack to the point to where, like, I was like, holy shit, there might be a chance that some of them would come up and shoot her. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. she's in the way of us being together. You know, you know, she's holy fucking shit. this fucking hateful bitch. I'm like, hateful bitch? We're married with kids. What are you talking Like, I've never met you before. Like, like crazy, crazy stuff that happens and, and it directed towards your significant other. Like, they're the reason why that we're not together now. You know, like, yeah, yeah. They're, the, they're, they're in between our love. It's like, Dude, we've never been in the same zip code. What are you talking <laughs> about right now? <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. Well, I know um, Paige Van Zandt, when she started posting about her now fiancé, I know he started getting death threats from some of her fans. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I can believe that. I'll yeah. just never post about it if I start dating someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These just... Um, that boy. actually probably is the best policy. Yeah. My, my page is a business page. It's going to stay business. Yeah. yeah. I'm just... I'm always fascinated with how misguided people are in terms of what they think is going to work. I mean, I've, I've learned long enough through trial and error what <laughs> will generally work and what won't. And I'm not saying that... I mean, that, that doesn't mean somebody's going to like me, but I at least know the right way to let somebody get to know me yeah. which is like in a non you know threatening way Stalker it's e way. even down to like i always tell guys you know don't so you meet somebody you're interested in them you know what i'm i'm not going to ask you for your phone number i'm going to give you mine yeah that's it and then even if you don't call like that's just letting you know i'm interested but you know no pressure and then maybe i'll run into you at some point again yeah. or something i mean you got to Slow and steady, guys. Yeah. Please. Oh, uh, like I met a guy the other day who his way of like getting to know me was to ask me to follow him on Instagram because he's like, oh, my phone doesn't work in here, <laughs> this restaurant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you follow me on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, all right, no worries. <laughs> okay. Actually, I do have a question about that because you know I'm social media like very uh, retarded. But why is it they so obsessed with you following them back? Because I see that all the time. Any of the times I look on the social media, you get people go, follow me back, follow me back. Like, is there different access that they have to you if no, you follow someone back? Or? No, I think from what, I, from what I've seen, 
whenever I've followed someone back, especially on Twitter, is that just gets them a little bit excited. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like I've I've had people go, oh, you know, it would make my day if Jesse followed me, and I'm like, it's nothing for me to follow someone. Like I don't care, so I will. And then it's like post after post of them talking about how excited they are that yeah. I followed them. So it's the I think it's like. You know, before you kind of got famous, if Brad Pitt had a known who you were or started paying attention to you, you'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, this is a really famous guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's just kind of an acknowledgement. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, like letting them know that they exist, even though right. they see you as a celebrity, that you still like acknowledge that, yeah. that the people are there, you know. Oh, Frank can tell you. It's like the day <laughs> that I discovered that Paul Stanley followed him on Twitter. <laughs> you remember that, Frank? We were at Hofbrau. We were at uh, uh, we were at Hofbrau House. Dude, that's my favorite fucking place. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> we're at Hofbrau House, and uh, we're sitting there. Not one of Richard's favorite places. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> although, although they do, do you keep buying him shots. Beer and lots of <laughs> his spot. Well, although they do, I should say this: uh, Hofbrau House does now have an extensive vegan menu. So oh, there that's is something right. for I me forgot there. you were a vegan. Yeah, yeah. I'm and a, he doesn't drink alcohol. Right. Oh, so you can't even get him spanked? N- no. Oh, that's unfortunate. No. Why would he you even yeah. go there? <laughs> yeah, well, you can well, have some pickled cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was there. I was there with Frank, and uh, but I do remember that we just happened to be sitting there when I discovered Paul Stanley followed him on Twitter, and Paul Stanley uh, was my childhood hero, and I got so excited, and Frank DM'd him, and about six months later we were doing a live show in Paul Stanley's living room. So sometimes it works out. Yeah, Not saying any of those cool. creepy dudes are going to end up so in your you living room. So you want me to go to their living room? No, no, I don't want you to oh, do okay. any of this. I just want you to keep right, coming cool. on so this podcast. So when I go missing. Yeah, you, no. know, you guys are my witness. <laughs> we, Richard told me to. <laughs> we will not allow you to go missing. Trust me, you are now considered a very valuable component of this podcast. So we are going to we are going to keep you safe. If I trust Frank because he's always got twenty eight guns on him. Totally. Well, if, if nothing else, if it takes that to protect you and keep you coming on this podcast, Frank and I will go out under the cover of night like a crime fighting <laughs> duo. Me, me in the sidecar like the boy wonder, yeah. taking on anybody we need to take on. Right, Frank. <laughs> Sounds good. You just hit him with a guitar, man. We're good. That's right. <laughs> All right. You got a few more minutes. How are we doing on time, Frank? When do you have to yeah, go fight just, the kid? Uh, in a few minutes here, I'm getting ready to get going. A few minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I want to ask you guys uh, something. Uh, I, we, we didn't talk about this last week, Frank. Actually, I because I, I wanted to get into this with uh, Jesse. I don't even know if you saw the story or not. But uh, especially since all three of you have uh, tattoos, and uh, two of the three of you are uh, female mixed martial artists. There's some symmetry here. This story <laughs> about uh, Angela Lee and her husband's tattoos. Oh, yes. Uh. Did you see this? Okay, do you know about this story, Frank? No. Okay, let me give you the, the quick <laughs> cliff notes here. So, Angela Lee. Andrea. Uh, Andrea? Did Andrea. I say Angela? Angela's the Asian who fights in 1FC. Oh yeah. yeah, how about Andrea's that? Andrea's the blonde who fights in How UFC? about me giving a little uh, yeah. inadvertent uh, shout, uh, out uh, Angela. shout out to Angela yeah, Lee? Yeah, Angela Lee's more famous than any of us, yeah, so <laughs> I think she needs a shout out. All right, Andrea <laughs> Lee. Now, she's KGB. Correct. She's the, uh, if your email gets hacked, she's the first one you want to look at, <laughs> with that KGB. And uh, so, see what I did there? It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, that joke went over better with Shannon Knapp, though, I'll tell you this. She laughed at that pretty heartily. Uh, so, I think she felt so, bad for you, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> so Andrea Lee, uh, who's now over in the UFC in your division, yep. right, uh, her, posted a picture, Frank, of her and her husband. Now, her husband is also her coach, and they were at the lake. And uh, it was on Instagram, and they're doing some water skiing or whatever they're doing. Problem is... Uh, Angela, uh, I mean, Andrea Lee's uh, husband's arm is very visible in the picture. And in the picture, he's got a swastika tattooed on his arm. And he's also got the SS lightning bolt. So you familiar with your World War II yeah. imagery, right? Yeah. So Well, I was going to sit there because I know swastikas were taken, I mean, it had more symbolism before it was used by the Germans. I mean, no, this is like a, a very specific. Yeah, they don't read um, that. Yeah. Yeah. Into, them? Yeah. See how my brain kicks in right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. I'm always sure. on the defense. I, I think. Yeah, I have an I'm alibi. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, not gonna work. I'm fine. Yeah. So, so that goes up on her Instagram. Some people notice it. Uh, start posting about it, and um, the the first thing that happens is 
maybe one of the greater <laughs> PR miscues I've seen in a long time. Because Frank and I will tell you, I mean, Frank is his own man and he has his own thoughts. But, you know, Frank and I, you and I have a friendship that sometimes we'll, you'll think about posting something or saying something publicly and you will seek my counsel, right? I mean, sometimes you'll be like, hey, what Actually, you pretty much 100% of the time. <laughs> 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 like his friend that keeps him out of trouble. Let me see. Hand me your yeah. phone before you hit send. Um, but no, you know, they. I don't know. I mean, you know, if, if, if you have people you're close to like that. but no, it's I'm like just very smart. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But, but just the, the, the I. So here's what she does, Frank. She, she posts something that basically says uh, something to the effect of everybody needs to get over yourselves, you sensitive ass mofos. That was the first admonishment from Andrea Lee about, hey, I can't believe you're this wound up about my, my husband's swastika <laughs> tattoos. Um, he put out a little more of a, a detail. It was better. It was better. It went into, hey, I did time in prison. Uh, I'm not the man now that I was then. Uh, this was the curious part, and, and I want to get into this with you guys. I know what you're you, you guys speak the tattoo language. <laughs> He said that he had looked into cover-ups and laser removal, and neither one were possibilities for him. But then he went on to talk about, but well, let's get back to that in a second. But he went on to talk about, you know, she's an awesome uh, uh, wife and mother and all that. So then she put out another statement, oh, uh, clearly after somebody pulled her aside and said. What uh, color are the tattoos? Black. It's oh, a very lighter. visible. Would it be better if they were pastel or you? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, I mean, because I mean, right. cover oh, the cover Okay. So well, you, if you get a good right. artist, there's no bullshitting around that. But yeah. But as far as removing tattoos, black ink explodes very easily. So yeah. I mean, if any kind of black tattoos are actually easier to remove. Yeah. yeah. Some of the colored tattoos actually are extremely difficult. Yeah. To get rid of because of the color of the ink, is the frequency like it's like basically like they they fucking microwave you. Yeah. yeah. And so it explodes inside <laughs> the skin, basically, the, for the last one that was described to me. Like, well, my wife has tried to have some stuff removed, and the stuff that's black. She tries to get Frank's like, name removed every time they get yeah. in a fight. She must have had tried to have that one tattoo removed 20 times, right? No, the no. joke is every time we get in trouble, I have tattoos put on me. That's, yeah. why, <laughs> that's why my finger, my arm, my back, my stomach, I'm running out of spots when I start getting fights with <laughs> Well, to, to just... The, the, you know, put the point though on what he was saying before we get everybody's thoughts here is uh, he he said that those were not options for him, and and then he he posted this on his Twitter. I agree with Jesse. He did do a better job of making the apology. However, the profile picture on Twitter is him in her corner wearing. A one percenter patch, the outlaw biker oh, patch. So I'm just like, boy, so why is somebody He's not like, helping these people? Stop him! Right? Yes, exactly. Stop you killing him! Right, right. No, that's what I'm saying. It's like someone. <laughs> They need help over it's there. It's so funny, though. And he was like, oh, I can't do it because I'm going to look more hillbilly, more redneck than I already do. But you know what's easier than editing your body? Just maybe your post? Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. some of your social media, you could actually yeah. consider the content and <laughs> yeah. perhaps not. I think that's that actually probably the easiest solution because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Yeah. Just, you, you. You're the ultimate editor of what you're putting on, through on your phone. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, also, too, I mean, I would have been more believable, not that he physically couldn't remove the tattoos, but because of Aryan Brotherhood and all the other kind of things that they possibly that's represent, right. there might be other issues yeah. of not being able to remove them and keep his health. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. certain situations, I mean, he might be out of prison, but I don't know how well you escape certain groups that you, yeah. you know, and, and, and look, I've never been to prison. I know you got to do what you have to do to survive, so I'm not going to fault anybody. I, I don't really have the... Uh, 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 the authority or the experience to really make an opinion and pass judgment on anybody. So, I mean, shit, I don't I'll know. I'll do it for both But, of I mean, I know a lot of people, <laughs> when you enter that lifestyle, it's not a really easy lifestyle to get out of, and it, they might find it insulting. I don't know. 
Well, but so first of all, with the cover-ups, that is something that we all agree could be done, right? Like, even if you just yeah. blacked them out, yeah. you see that sometimes. Sure. Right? I've yeah. never heard of a cover-up not working. Yeah, yeah I've, got a, I've got a other, bunch of cover-ups. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the one I was thinking of is even if you can't cover it up, how about just the circle with the line drawn through yeah. it? You know, I mean, have a, I, wear I, a long sleeve shirt. Yeah, this seemed like kind of a flimsy uh, defense to I me. Know, I never sure. thought about it how Frank is saying it though like I, I did see some arguments about yeah. um you know like if he ever went back to prison it would protect you <laughs> you don't want to have to have all the work like, done all yeah, over like again i mean that's that. just well, i mean yeah it's one of those things too, like yeah. you know, you gotta walk him out of guy's shoes who knows i mean that's a whole world that a lot i think most of us don't really yeah. know very well so i don't want to really pass judgment because i mean i was never in a gang i don't i never went to prison and had to join one to survive but i mean uh they're, they're pretty hardcore yeah. so i mean but let me say the responses were better than like even the initial judgment yeah, what, you know what, what i mean like their posts their yeah. posts and how they react and how yeah. like andrea and her husband reacted to it were they like they blew it out of proportion Clearly. themselves they made yeah. it worse oh yes which i, I thought was hilarious i agree well if frank's the uh, <laughs> i know it, yeah if if frank's point is right about like well maybe you know it's like you're there the the gang is going to be offended that you're rescinding your your ceremonial membership or something <laughs> like that i would submit to the gang do you really want somebody who's only with you and tattoo only at this point? You know, yeah, like he, they don't seem very uh, committed to the cause. Yeah. If that's the case, it's sort of like <laughs> like when you get somebody to help you move and they like fake lift their corner of the couch when you're going down the stairs. Like, how much help are they really? You yeah, know? but you got to think like how the potential for that tattoo to be visible on a very very worldwide public stage yeah. is huge now. Yeah. So why would they? Like, if that was what it was, was about, you know, whatever, being part of the gang and, and the potential repercussions, like, and you're saying, you know, would you want them to only be committed because he has the tattoo? Like, now that tattoo is being seen all across the world. Uh-huh. Like, that's advertisement. A, yeah, yeah. Huge advertising for him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And who knows, too? I mean, even though they weren't bright enough just to kind of hide the tattoos or and, and not... <laughs> Or just to avoid being shown um, doesn't necessarily mean that. I mean, I know he's saying that he, that's a different part of his life, but I mean, maybe they're not out of that lifestyle. Maybe that's not. Maybe that's more of a reason why it's not an option to remove it to begin with. You're certainly going to have a harder time making the argument that you are out of it if, for some reason, you just can't. You, can't you know, get, yeah. oh no, listen, I'm 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 not gay or anything, but don't throw away the gay porn. You know, yeah. like I mean, let's just no. I just I want to be reminded of what I'm not. You know, so let's just keep that over there in the closet, will you? Yeah, but that's that goes more to what Jess is saying. If that's the situation, and, and you are still in this lifestyle, and you keep that going, then A, if for whatever reason you did screw up, and somehow you posted a picture and it was seen, then but the, then now B, I would go with the other Jess saying, hey, ignore it. I wouldn't even have acknowledged a fan pointing it out, just kind of blow it off, like, hey, whatever, it's in the past life, and just leave it at that, like, mm -hmm. not say anything more to it. But, like, you're right, I think that they, uh, 100% from what I just, from what you guys are showing me, they're the ones that made it an issue I, yeah. I not think, so much the first fan it was like yeah the fan pointed it out or someone might have it, it might have made an article who knows but the reaction was yeah worse I, I think you could ignore it if you were competing in the ding dong fighting championship but i think if you're in the ufc Reebok's probably going to call someone at some point and say what what are we doing here what yeah but that's when this? you acknowledge it you know and yeah. well but then i mean can Reebok really say something to you i mean i mean i mean no matter how offensive a symbol is on someone's body it's still a, you have a right to expression of no yeah, your and thoughts he and your beliefs i mean yeah. i might not agree with your belief system but i can't tell you you can't tattoo it on your shoulder but yeah. they but they could keep him and for that matter her if if they really wanted to press it out of competition i think they could yeah, yeah but that, he, that's like, a form of censorship that's kind of bullshit itself uh well yeah you she can go she, i mean they can go uh, exhibit that other places but they have the ability to control what is or isn't on their broadcast i mean for christ's yeah. sake remember when they they uh photoshopped uh, uh dan hardy's tibetan tattoos off his stomach when they what? were courting china do you remember that yeah no. when wow. dan fought I think it was when he fought George St. Pierre. He's got a Sanskrit thing on yeah. his stomach. And the UFC was just starting to get into China. <laughs> and this poster turned up with Dan. Dan had all the other tattoos. <laughs> 
for some reason the stomach was uh, <laughs> was virgin skin all of wow. a sudden. Yeah, yeah, he never got a clear answer on that. All right, Frank, uh, we're going to let you go kick sand in that kid's face, I guess, and uh, I'll let the, uh, 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 Jess and Jesse can uh, finish out the show with me here if you're good. Do you have a budget for my bail? Uh, well, I mean, maybe, but I don't, I don't know, especially with uh, tensions between Trump and Malcolm Turnbull these days. I don't know how easy it's going to be to get you out of there if there's trouble. I thought we pissed off the Canadians. I didn't know. Are we, are we pissed no. off the Australians too now? No. The, the, the <laughs> Australian Prime Minister was the first, the very first ally he pissed off. That You guys have a real distinction there. That was, oh, like that was day like two one. or three years ago already. Yeah, two no, years ago. no, it was the first day in the Oval Office. He like picked <laughs> yeah. up the phone and yeah. started yelling at the Australian guy. He's like, I thought we were friends. What's going on I here? forgot about that. Yeah. This is weird. This is very weird. So well, I tell you what, if, if there is trouble, I will come over there and negotiate your release. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> That's what kind of friend I am. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, we'll talk to you soon, man. Okay, bye, Frank. Cool, man. Bye. There goes All right, Frank. Guys. See you. All right. Frank Mayer checking in from uh, Brisbane, Australia, where he's going to be doing <laughs> – he is over there for uh, ACB. He's going to be doing his regular color commentary over there and then whatever he's doing with this kid and the rugby player. Sounds very suspect. <laughs> so weird. What did you call it? Down Under Logic. Yeah. 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 Down, I like that. Down Under Logic. <laughs> What do you guys think about this? Was uh, uh, another one that came up the last uh, couple of days. I had a pretty strong opinion about. It. Did you guys see that the UFC signed Greg Hardy, the yeah. football player that with the history of domestic abuse? Like do you know about this? Really bad, bad domestic oh, wow. violence. Yeah, bad. He, he was. Uh, <clears throat> he's a former NFL player. He played for the Carolina Panthers when this happened. Uh, it was a girlfriend of his. He was convicted of assaulting her. And then he appealed it. She did not testify. I think basically dropped outside. They couldn't find her for the appeal. And then it was dropped on appeal. So the, the team wouldn't have him. The Dallas Cowboys eventually picked him up, had him for a year or two. He got some other drug problems. And then uh, washed out of football but wanted to compete in mixed martial arts. He had, I think, three or four amateur MMA fights, won them all by knockout. He's a heavyweight. He's a big guy. And last night made his debut on uh, the Tuesday Night Contender Series, yeah. won his fight in 40 seconds or something, knocked out the other guy, and now he's signed to a UFC contract. Yeah. What do you think? I, I don't have a very good opinion I don't that. either. I think that when it comes to stuff like that, there's two kinds of people in the world. There's the kind that do and the kind that don't. Yeah. That's my firm belief. Yeah. And when people talk about, like, you know, second chances, you know, hey, if you're the 18-year-old the kid who's in the getaway car when the liquor store gets robbed and now you're 40 and you're in front of the parole board, that's one conversation. Yeah. But when we're talking about your wires being crossed, like something that's in you, that's a broken piece. Of, this is my opinion, but that's a broken piece of you that doesn't get unwired. I mean, yeah. you, you seek to contain it, certainly, and you, you punish through the law and things like that. But I don't, I don't think that's like an awkward phase that someone no, goes through. No, it's not. You know, like I, like I had a spate with domestic violence before I moved out here to Vegas. That's actually oh, why yeah. I moved to Vegas. Okay. Um, I had my fiance at the time arrested on one count of attempted murder and two counts of assault. Yeah. Um, and I know for a fact he's done that to women before me. And I have, I know for a fact he's done it to women since me. Yeah. And I have no doubt that he's going to continue doing that. Yeah. You know, and he didn't get convicted. He got a, a 15 month suspended sentence, still allowed to leave the country. He lives in Texas now. He's from Australia. They didn't mm. take his passport, nothing. I think mm. he got a small fine. That mm. was it. And they gave him his second chance. And I am a firm believer in that. Someone who is capable of going as far as he went with me, and I know he's been further with other women before I met him, he's not going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, he can do all the convincing and, and all the lying in the world, and he can convince you that he's a really good person. But who he is at its core is someone who is capable and willing to do stuff like that. You know, so yeah. I don't, I am very against him being signed. I'm very against Greg being signed because I don't believe that people like that change. I, I think it's a mental disorder. I mean, I think it's yeah. something that, 
that you and there's only certain things that fit into this category i'm not somebody you know i i mean i believe that the prison system and the legal system should uh primarily be there to rehabilitate you know yeah. but i also think there are certain things that we and unfortunately a lot of times these things are are seated in people so early that by the time you really find out a lot of times it, it's too late you know but but also the fact that one of two things happens either they are neutralized or like you said they push further and further yeah. and further because one thing about a sociopath they give you plenty of they you they let you see them coming yeah you know i mean they that you can see them coming <clears throat> from a long way away but i think the biggest mistake people make with those people is well, you know, it's been a little while since yeah. fill in the blank, whatever yeah. happened. and uh, Like he's yeah. had a stressful week at work. You know, there's right. always an excuse. Well, and there was they, also like what was brought up about his, well, you know, he had substance abuse problems. and uh, That's his problem. Yeah, he chose to take those substances. It's also it's all a conscious thought process. And, and, and deal with that, you know, yeah. like yeah. That's, that's something that there's a lot of support for people like that, of mm -hmm. course, you know, like and the, the two don't definitely come in hand in hand for sure yeah he can get support and he can do that elsewhere I, I think that the ufc signing him puts fans in an impossible situation because people like me refuse to support companies that support people like that yeah right and so now what do you do as a fan you know well yeah well first of all what you do is you sound you you sound off i'm yeah. a i'm a firm believer <clears throat> in uh you you vote with your dollars and what you do exactly. is, and, and, and if you are a consumer of the offending product, if that's how you view it, it's even more important that you talk to them and you, you let mm -hmm. them know. It doesn't have to be either or. Like a lot of times people will go, oh, what are you going to do? Never watch. I, I, I went, I mean, this is quick aside, but I went through this with the NFL a number of years ago because yeah. one of my dogs is one of the dogs that was rescued from michael vick's dog fighting ring okay. so i was very upset when they re-signed him but you you speak out about it you put pressure on them and you you don't be quiet about it yeah, you yeah. keep talking about it because i here's the other part of it i i don't get yeah, i get your thoughts here i don't get the fun in that i don't get the fun in watching that because yeah. like uh uh you know i i am drawn to combat sports if I meet someone and I like them personally, then I like watching them more because yeah. you are personally invested in them. Yeah. But if I met them and found them to be an asshole, um, I don't enjoy watching them. Yeah. It's, I always draw the analogy, if that person worked in an office with you, if you just had an office job, you would root for that person to get fired. Yeah. You wouldn't hope that they would win employee of <laughs> yeah. the month and then attend the party when yeah. they do, right? Yeah, but it's like that in sports, you know? Yeah. Our athletic ability seems to supersede any negative thing that you do yeah. in your life. Like, you see it time and time again, fucking Kobe Bryant, you know? Yeah. Like, it happens so often and it's fucking... It, like, it blows my mind that that's where our society is at, that, like, oh, he did all these really terrible things, but he's an amazing athlete, so fuck it. Let's just let him keep going and let him keep making his millions and let him keep being on TV yeah. instead of there's no punishment. What Like, what stops him from going and doing it to the next girlfriend? I promise you he, that that wasn't the first girlfriend that he did that to, Yeah. you know? But he didn't get punished for that one either. He didn't get punished for the first ones. He didn't get punished for that mm -hmm. one. And now, now he's, he's going to be televised on one of the – largest broadcast in the world you know for mm. one of the most popular sports in the world where the fuck is the pump like what's stopping him from mm. doing it to every every girl that comes in, t in contact with him you know and 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 back to uh <coughs> just this point for a second about the the substance abuse thing you know i've never i i've, I've never done drugs but if i did them that's not going to turn me into a woman beater. You know no, what I mean? That's no. not something that that's something that is in you that maybe you loosens your inhibitions or something. Yeah. But that's not something that you know. That's like saying you know somebody only molests kids when they drink. I mean yeah. you know there's there's uh, something inside that's causing that to happen. I don't I don't get the appeal of what like I was thinking. You know you think about like great athletic to your point, uh, Jesse. You think about like great athletic achievements and things like that. People that that you you watch do impressive athletic things. But if you found them to be of such low quality uh, of a person that they fall into this type of category, 
do you really feel like you're missing that much by not being able to see them do what they do? I can't think of one single instance of anybody, and you don't even just tie it to athletes. I mean, musicians, actors, anything I've ever liked that I couldn't go, well, if I found out that they were just a garbage person, yeah. I, I don't I don't think I would need their presence in my life. Yeah. Yeah, I wish more people were like that. Yeah. I don't want to support people like that. Like, I have an aversion to them, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, <clears throat> there's, I mean, there's beauty in a heel, you know, mm-hmm. but they're, they're a created caricature of, of being evil. Mm-hmm. Evil's not fun to celebrate. No. You're you right. know? No, that's, that should be, that's a very appropriate line of demarcation mm. is evil. Yeah. Because, you know, there are people, there, there's a, there's a, 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 a vast uh, uh, divide between evil and obnoxious. Like, yeah. you can be obnoxious. Like Colby Covington. <laughs> there you go. It's an obnoxious yeah. heel. Yeah. But he is not an evil person. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. He, he plays a character. And the audience can tell the difference, yeah. right? Like, so if the audience can, why would the UFC benefit from signing this bloke, you know? Yeah. Like, it, just, it doesn't it make doesn't, any sense. No, I don't. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it's such a systematic problem. That, like Jesse was saying, in in professional sports, and this extends way outside the UFC, and I think one of the reasons that I maybe have a particular focus on it is because I don't like other sports. I I, I, I follow combat sports. I don't enjoy Lucky, other sports. Lucky, because football has a lot well, no, of yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, and that's that's been my my long standing point about like even everything you've just seen them go through with the whole national anthem business. Mm. No matter what your feelings about that, mm. what blows my mind is that they've got. Uh, you know, at this point, you've got hundreds of people who've been arrested on, you know, various forms of crimes, a couple of people that have actually been implica- implicated and in, in some cases imprisoned on murder, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you got Ray Rice who knocked his girlfriend unconscious in an elevator. But now we got him kneeling for the national anthem. Now we've gone too far. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird that that is the line that somebody draws. Because, and, and maybe I'll pose this question to you guys. Do you think maybe the problem in the broader sense is that most people are just not, they're not, I guess I would say, like, civically conscientious about what they consume? Like, you know, even even the products that they consume. Yeah. You know, am I, am I wearing something that was made by child labor? Yeah. You know, am I right down to am I supporting an athlete who, you know, beat his woman unconscious or something like that, that maybe a lot of people just don't think in those terms ever. Like any action that I take, big or small, what does this mean to no, the world around me? People don't care, and especially in the age of social media, um, I think it's hard to really care about it, you know, mm-hmm. because whether you whether you react negatively or positive to something, now with social media and how quickly people have access to that, you get an immediate feedback. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like it's like drinking or taking drugs. Like you say something, you get a reaction straight away, which is what I think people crave. So there's no need to look into anything further mm. because you're getting you're getting that quick fix all the time. Like. I see it with people starting fights on Twitter about shit that they clearly don't care about at all. They're mm-hmm. just doing it to to get a rise and to get that little bit of attention, you know. I think um I think I think with social media being so prominent that people feel unimportant compared to the people that they're watching online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so then like I think there's also a big fear of being the one who stands up for something and might get negative repercussions back because Mm -hmm. of how cruel people are Mm -hmm. online and how cruel they are immediately Mm -hmm. and how far that can actually spread. I think there's a massive fear about actually like researching stuff and standing up for what you believe in, um, which to me is really sad and which is why like as someone who has more of a profile, I try to be very vocal Mm -hmm. about things that I believe in because I know there are so many people who don't who don't have that same comfortability and who mm-hmm. don't, who aren't ready to stand up to the negative uh, repercussions that can come back. Yeah, yeah, and and you know when you think about being and and this boy, this really like tracks all the way back to like childhood and the way you're raised and things like that. Because we we're actually when we were talking to Frank there a second ago about the the anti-bullying campaign thing that he's doing, and everybody talks about bullying a lot these days. When I think back to being a kid, I think 
the best thing that I had going for me as a kid is that I always felt like I was the it was it was perfectly fine to be the only person in a room that was doing or not doing something yeah depending on what my choice was and in fact a lot of times i wore that individually uh, individuality like a badge of honor yeah like actually i would have the opposite uh, uh approach of going along to get along if i found that i was going along with the crowd sometimes i would second guess myself just yeah. out of the fact like wait a second what am i doing am i conforming here what's going on you know but i think that was important because it kept peer pressure to a, a minimum yeah. and then as you become an adult exactly to your point you don't fear being the only person to speak out to yeah. be the first person in fact you kind of feel better about yourself if you're the first person to speak out as opposed to the second or the third yeah yeah it I, was harder. yeah i completely agree because I, I was the same in school like i never really um like i always had friends but i never really cared about whether they were coming with me to do yeah. whatever i was doing i just played sport and like did my academic stuff and that was it you know mm -hmm. and and my mom and my grandma always encouraged me to be that way and to be very strong-minded and to be very vocal about what i believe in mm -hmm. um without intentionally hurting other people's feelings you know what i mean mm -hmm. to be conscientious of that but definitely as an adult now i don't have that fear of, of if I speak something truthfully and honestly that I 100% believe in, I don't care what you come back at me mm -hmm. with. You know what I mean? And I just like, I wish more people had that sense of self and that self-assuredness to, I feel like we'd get a lot more change done and there'd be a lot more good done in this world. But like people now, especially are growing up in this age where, you know, there's cry rooms at colleges and like there's, like so many anti-bullying campaigns that now people are just allowed to do whatever they want like they can cry they can cry about everything and be rewarded for it and not have to learn how to stand up for themselves i'm not i'm not saying mm -hmm. i agree with bullying that's not it at all but i mean like people don't have to stand up for what they believe in because they're getting supported from everywhere regardless yeah and and i think <clears throat> as well intentioned as that support is that that historically the best kind of deterrent has actually been like a like a public shaming yeah. like that 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 pariah for us to look at, a, at them collectively and say be gone with you you know yeah. go <laughs> go do that over somewhere away from me because you are not welcome yeah. uh here and and maybe case in point then and to your credit you know you're 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 speaking out as a, I guess what you would loosely consider a coworker, um, is that it, that message should come directly from the other people, yeah. you know, in sure. that, in that employment pool, because back to the, the Vic example for a second, you know, when I, when I was going through all that, um, and I, I talked about that case because I covered it on my radio show long before I actually got my dog so yeah. i was talking about it not even realizing eventually the very personal connection i was going to have to it but um i said you know if the, the the way that this could be handled overnight when when he was brought back into the nfl is if a player and it would need to be a star player you know yeah. it would need to not somebody that you wouldn't notice if they weren't playing anymore like you know tom brady yeah, or something yeah. right if that guy had said you know what I don't work with people like that. And if you bring him back in, I'm done. Yeah. I'll retire. I got more money than I need. Uh, I'll quit. You won't have me uh, to market. Try me. Yeah. That'd be the last you ever heard about Michael Vick coming back because they would not have wanted to lose him. Yeah. Now, I think the reality of it is the reason why somebody like uh, Tom Brady, to use the example, doesn't do that is because he doesn't look at Michael Vick as a coworker. He looks at him as probably the furthest thing from yeah. anybody he would ever associate with, yeah. right? So he just looks at that like, you know, the, the, the guy that we've got working maintenance overnight or something like, yeah. you know, I mean, somebody I'm never even in a million years going to associate with. But then there is the problem. Yeah. That what I wish he would do is look at it and go, well, that may be how I perceive him up here in my mansion on the hill. Yeah. But the fan the average person sees us on equal footing part of the same fraternity yeah, if you yeah. will and so if i make that statement then i eradicate the problem but the fans then have a lot of power because they've got nothing to lose they can speak up about something like yeah. that you know like it's not just about colleagues speaking up it's fans like and particularly men i think yeah. would be a really strong voice to say look we don't actually want to watch this guy 
bring us somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. You I know? have seen a lot of like public outcry That's about good. it. Um, I've seen a lot of petitions to Dana White about Greg. Um, I haven't really seen a whole lot for him, but I have seen people do the whole like second chance thing mm-hmm. or like, oh, you know, we don't understand. Maybe it didn't happen the way it happened. Like oh, he wasn't convicted one. of anything. Yeah. But what is the second chance? Why is an opportunity <clears throat> that's like really the golden ticket? Like yeah. I know hundreds of people that want that opportunity, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like not particularly in that division, but like all over the world that are working their nuts off right now in every gym yeah. across the world, you know. And why why can't we hold somebody up that has messed up and say, look, you don't get opportunities. Yeah, That's yeah. what you lost. You've got to work for it yeah, now, you know, you know like that, prove yourself that, yeah. you, that you have changed and that you have rehabilitated. Absolutely. Like, instead of just going, hey, here's your cake. Exactly. Well, don't that's the example, right? It, yeah. Because we all know that people don't really get get – the full arm of the law thrown at them you know yeah. like we all know this like for, for whatever reason you know like but what we can do as a society is not give these people opportunities or celebrate them you know mm. and then that then shares a really clear message to other people that are like this like I need to put myself in check or I'm not going to have the life that I yeah. need and want you know like and that's what should be the repercussion either yeah. jail we take your life off you by removing you from society or you don't get your opportunities because you're an antisocial person yeah you don't get to right. be it is, Part yeah, of it. it like, is egregiously antisocial behavior, yeah. and we should identify those people and, and track them and flag them and yeah. monitor them. That They don't necessarily go to prison for life, but we, we, we neutralize their threat. And another thing about the second chance, you know, people confuse, I, I think a lot of times you see this with sports fans, they will confuse the second chance at life with the second chance in the professional sport. Yeah. So, you know, your reward, if you go to jail or you're on parole or probation or whatever it is, your reward when you finish your sentence is you don't have to be in jail anymore. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all that you're guaranteed. If you were working at Home Depot and you got sent to prison, try going back in two years and going, well, I'm back. Give me my job that I'm entitled my to reclaim. Yeah. They're going to be like, get lost. Yeah. We don't hire felons. <laughs> so, so this idea that they're somehow entitled – to step back into that role is is fundamentally false. Yeah, I think. but you know, it yeah. comes down to allowing people to do whatever they want because they have athletic prowess, mm. you know, or because they have some celebrity status. Yeah, it I'll, seems to excuse bad behavior. I'll yeah. tell you another thing to look out to uh, look out for too with this guy, and and I saw this in in some of his comments because they actually I guess last night did a uh, like a little package leading up to it and they kind of alluded to this checkered past and he he made a reference <laughs> to yeah I know just gotta say yeah. what the problem is right. you know <laughs> like name the thing yeah. yeah well he made a reference to you know I threw it all away and then I had to sit on the sidelines and watch everyone else claim their their celebrity and entertain and you know that sort of thing here's here's the problem so here, many tears for him here's the problem with that <laughs> oh, here's the problem with that and i you know i obviously i haven't you know lived the situation that that you were in but to draw the analogy back to what i went through with with michael vick yeah and and i'll tell you why i think that's appropriate because there's going to be some people going oh well people dogs are different you know listen the people who abuse children and animals they're the they're the women abusers of tomorrow. Yes. I mean, you know, they're the these types of psychopaths. You know, they they build incrementally. So this type of all this behavior that we're talking about, it's like same asshole, different medium. You yeah. know, whoever they're hurting from one day to the next. But what I was going to say about that is. I, you know, there was a lot of call for Vic at the time, to second chance, you know, and well, now he can go out and talk to kids, you know, he can, which always blew my mind. Like, <laughs> like, like, it's a good idea to tell your kids not to talk to strangers, but I don't need Jared from Subway to tell them. Like, yeah. I'll tell them, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a terrible idea to have him deliver that message. So I saw Vic one time. It was actually when I tried to, I tried to confront him. Uh, he wanted no part of talking. These guys are always the biggest cowards, too. Yeah. Like, when they're really faced with, you know, the music, they turn tail and run. But um, I, I went to this thing, so I tried to have a conversation with him that he wasn't interested in having. But I watched him talk to these kids. You know, they put him in front of the at-risk kids, right? And here's what he says. He says, you know, if you if you make the choices that I made, you could lose everything. Now, that's technically true. 
He he made the, he he went to prison and he lost his money before the Nike and everybody else gave it all back to him. But but if that's his assessment of the worst thing that happened. Yeah. That means he didn't mm. get it. And I'm that drawing, means he has a little lesson right. at I'm, all. And I'm drawing an analogy to what you heard Greg Hardy say uh-huh. about if you make these choices, you could lose your 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 wealth and privilege, right? But I'm working my way back up to be a celebrity, yes. so that's all that matters. Be- because on that afternoon <clears throat> in that room with Vic, if he truly had empathy, which sociopaths do not possess, mm-hmm. He would have looked at the kids and he would have said, if there's anybody in this room that has an urge to hurt someone or something, don't leave this room today without telling a teacher, telling a parent, tell me, because I had that and look at what happened. But he didn't say that yeah. because he's never thought it. No, because he probably actually isn't that guilty about right. it. I know, like, I can only speak from my own personal experiences. Yeah. But after I left and moved to Vegas, uh, I had my ex come to Vegas and message me on Instagram and tell me that he forgave me for having him arrested and that he wanted to take me out to dinner. And that to me was, okay, so you clearly don't even know what you did wrong because he was never punished for it. Yeah. You know, which is like, if you don't believe that you did something wrong, how are you going to not do it again? Well, Wait, it's because they don't believe that it is wrong. That's exactly yeah. right. Because it's, it's part of their instinct. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's just natural they, instinct They for talk them. themselves into, and probably really does believe that. I yeah. mean, you know, it's probably like, a, you know, you create this alternate reality where you just talk, you know, you, and, and, and that is actually, you know, a hallmark of the narcissist, you know, yep. somebody who has the ability to elevate themselves above anyone else and have that that air of superiority yep. probably to the point that they really do believe that you yeah. know what i think i'm gonna i'm gonna be the bigger person here yeah. i think i'm gonna actually forgive you that's yep. what i'm gonna yeah. do yeah it's not even a denial thing it's no. an actual truth like their truth is completely malaligned yeah. with society standards like yeah, completely exactly. malaligned and yeah they, they truly believe that they're innocent and you hear mm. all this stuff of like um falsely accused you yeah. know and in their mind they are falsely accused because they truly don't believe yeah. that was the yeah. right thing to do. Yeah, right, right. They, they believe that you're a possession yeah. at some point. If you know, only like, we knew. Like, they like can I do, created it. Yeah, it was oh, yeah. Say, we if, created if it. If only we knew all the circumstances yeah. involved. See, we haven't heard their side of yeah. it. Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of that. And, you know, I, I here's the thing. I, uh, you know, I, I like to think that I am, um, uh, uh, I have a lot of fluidity when it comes to, like, people yeah. you know i mean i don't uh I, I don't there's good prostitutes and bad prostitutes i found <laughs> in my day job you know what i'm saying but it's like i mean i'm not just writing you <laughs> off my because microphone. of your you know whatever it is you do but the one thing that i will pride myself on uh you know uh, frank uh, included is like anybody that i consider in a circle of friends or anybody that i have around me i would be happy for you guys to meet any of them do you know what yeah, i mean like yeah, yeah. like there's there's no one in that circle that's like oh god i hope that guy doesn't yeah. do what he does you know and <laughs> yeah. it's like if you find that person in your orbit yeah get rid of them yeah it's like i don't understand yeah. why we're like you know trying to welcome these people into the fold when we should just do the exact opposite yeah Yeah, definitely yeah you're right what a bummer (laughs) (laughs) so cool next topic (laughs) all right let's talk some music i see whiskey yes yes uh, because here's here's uh uh what happened jess um uh jesse came on the podcast huge hit um uh and uh fascinating and charming but you find i'm sure you found this too uh when you became friends with her uh like peeling an onion uh, multiple layers <laughs> to the uh, she's she's got depth to her. A stink and can so, make you cry. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I started. Uh, I know I thought you saw, saw you post something about like uh, enjoying music with banjos and fiddles yeah. and stuff like that. And see, I don't expose my my love and experience in the world of bluegrass to everybody. That's not the first thing I tell you about. Yeah. But then I find out about that. I'm like, oh gosh, okay, we have something to talk about. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out. I thought I'd I turn you on to some some bands you turn me on to some i i don't know i i saw you wearing that whiskey shivers t-shirt 
I looked them up online. They're from my home state of Texas. Yep. They're from Austin, right? Yep. And I kind of purposely didn't investigate them too much because I kind of wanted to have a natural reaction. <laughs> so what is the, I mean, you're clearly a champion of the band. Yeah, I love this, them. Okay, how did, okay, how did all so, this get started? All right, so I discovered them through Pitch Perfect because I'm a huge Pitch Perfect fan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they're, in, they're in Pitch Perfect 3. And I was like, I was watching, I'm like, fuck, these guys are really cool, you know? And then so I started, like, I stalked them and found out who they were and then started like you yeah. you sent them a message saying you'd be together forever and here's yeah, the bible yeah, yeah. i wrote I about wrote you a, guys i wrote yeah. a manifest about yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> look them up on youtube while we're talking so um, we can find a little clip yeah so i like stalked them online found out who they were started like listening to their actual music and i was yeah. like fuck that's really cool and then um my strength and conditioning coach at the ufc center Bo, he's from louisiana uh-huh. you know he's he's pretty country loves bluegrass and i was like oh have a look at this and then i think that like when i showed him whiskey shivers and he loved it that really cemented our relationship you know what i mean yeah. and like made us better friends because we had that we oh, had okay. that new common ground yeah so i think that was also part of the reasons why i loved him so much yeah yeah and I just, yeah, I just, then I started like talking to them online and I was like, fuck, if I get the fight in Texas, like I want them to come and they're like, yeah, no, we'll be there for sure. Okay. And yeah, I just love them. I listen to them every day. Oh, like, you meant if you're booked for a fight. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. you meant if there was like, you got in a bar fight, you were hoping they no, would no, show no. up. Oh, okay. I, I'm, they just play the soundtrack. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> just banjo kicks in and it's on. Yeah. 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 And then, and then I like... Like they don't have that big a following, you know. They're pretty small. They're mm. a pretty small group from Texas. So then, okay. I think once I started, I started posting about them a ton and wearing yeah. their shirts and all my videos. And yeah. now they like, I fucking whoever runs their Twitter videos started a fight with someone on behalf of me on Twitter ah. the other day. And <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. So this little music video they shot in their uh, their apartment. Plus, I think the one with the mullet's really cute. Oh, so okay. That also helps. We're gonna right try to there. get oh, you in. Guy. Yeah. Okay. Bobby Fitzgerald. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna try to get you into a film clip. I know. They'll yeah. be listening to this for sure. And yeah. I saw They're the instrumentation is like banjo, fiddle, uh, acoustic guitar, mandolin. Does he see a mandolin over there? Maybe. Ah, oh, stand up bass. Very yeah, nice. they're awesome, man. Yeah. And then so they sent me one of their records. I, I don't even have a record player, but they sent uh-huh. me their records. So I have that like... Well, you come up here in the studio and Yeah, play I'll bring it, it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just love them. Like as soon as I started listening to their music, it just makes me really happy. And that's what I train to a lot now. Oh, that's awesome. Now, did you find yourself... Were you predisposed to any of this type of music before? Or are they kind of your gateway into what, what I call roots music? I always liked it. Yeah. But I've never been very good at like remembering band, mm-hmm. name, band names. I'm more like... If I hear a song, I'll be like, yeah, that's really cool. I love that. Mm-hmm. But I would never be able to tell you who mm-hmm. it was by or anything like that, you okay. know. But since I did discover them and, like, Bo and I made that connection with yeah. Bluegrass and Hillbilly Music, yeah. there are a couple of others that he's shown me that I really like. Who else has he shown you? Trampled by Turtles. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Them. So those two are probably, are probably my favorite. And uh, The Dead South. Okay. I don't yeah. know them. Oh, you should. Li- they're they're kind of more rocky bluegrass okay yeah okay i think yeah. you'd like them if yeah. you like bluegrass they're great I, I will check that out so <laughs> it's uh that it's interesting because a Banjo lot of Odyssey, a lot of right people <laughs> do not know or immediately recognize the the symmetry between bluegrass music and especially like the 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 beat and the tempo of it to like punk and thrash yeah 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 there's a lot of similarity because I actually this is the Dead South we're yeah. in here. Okay, because um, uh, I actually in my formative years uh, played in a what would now be considered an alternative country band, but yep. there wasn't really a name for it back yeah. then. This is uh, the back in my day portion. Yeah. Back in my day, we didn't even have a name for it. <laughs> but uh, but that's what we did, and we actually would play a lot more rock and punk type venues because when you put a when you put drums with bluegrass, all of a sudden you've yeah. got something you can mosh to. Yeah. So you would see like you know mosh pits and and things like that. So uh, now and another thing I found interesting too is that at least in my personal experience, the band always did really well overseas because here that music was born here. Yeah. But overseas, especially Scandinavia, uh, I mean Australia as well, that a lot of times their what would be considered traditional music or their roots music was like 
yodeling and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. So they didn't really have contemporary versions of homegrown yeah. music that was popular. Yeah. So they they would eat up whatever you were bringing over to them, and and consequently you could be much bigger over. It's like I don't know about whiskey shivers, but I no, would. No, they bet just they just went to Europe. They just did a music yeah. festival in I'll Europe. I bet they did and like, huge over there. I've been asking them. I'm like, when like when the fuck are you coming to Nevada? <laughs> yeah, turn turn this up just a little bit so I can hear. I love this song. Is this their singer? He looks a little like um, Pedro <laughs> from uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, this is cool. Okay, look up. Okay, now I'm going to turn you on something. Please sir. Do you know, have you heard of the band Old Crow Medicine Show? Okay, look oh, up, baby. look up Old Crow Medicine Show. Do um, eight dogs, eight banjos. Find that track for me. Um, this, ba- by the way, your fight in uh, Singapore, Donald Cerrone's the main event, right? Yeah, dude, okay. I had a total fangirl moment this morning because he commented on one of my pictures. Ah. On Instagram. <laughs> All right, I'm well, a huge Cerrone fan. <laughs> okay, if you want to impress him, what you need to do is just slip into casual conversation a reference to Old Crow Medicine Show. Okay. Because Donald and I... Do I have to know anything more about it? <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll get you up to I'll give you the crash course. Whoa, that's the sort of... Yeah, we have a, a terrible... Yeah. I'll tell you what we can do. Try another clip. See if you can find Make a it your ringtone, and I'll just give you a call when oh, you're sitting next to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wingman. I yeah. get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, Donald and I, uh, for, for years, have found a common bond in, uh, like, hillbilly country music. Uh, we both love it. All right, give these guys a look. That's fucking dope. What's the wobbling here? I think it's just yeah. Sorry, we're playing the audio over YouTube, but it's not great, but... Yeah, you will like it. There we go. He's got it. I want to learn how to play the banjo so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so when, so remember that for when you see uh, Cowboy. I Just will. To, we'll have a casual reference. Can you text me the name because I will yeah, yeah, 100% yeah. forget as soon as I leave. Yeah, here. I'll send you a couple other yeah. like good live clips too, so you'll be you got the full background yeah, cool. to work into the conversation however it needs to uh, to come up. But yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, uh, so I am a, uh, I'm a big <gasps> fan of, uh, Old Crow Medicine Show. I actually just, I went to, uh, Punk Rock Bowling just a couple of weeks ago here in Las Vegas for my annual, uh, I spent three days out in the sun with a bunch of punk bands <laughs> and discovered a band called Larry and His Flask that was a similar <laughs> instrumentation. Oh, yeah. But they were the only band like that on a punk festival yeah. that, you know, otherwise had like, you know, X and no effects, a bunch of people yeah, like yeah, that yeah. playing, but, you know, people... Uh, stage dive into them and uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. That's now, awesome. now I was gonna see how this segment went. I had this penciled in, Mikey. Okay. I feel like this segment's going pretty well, right? This topic, yeah. we're doing okay. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's feeling pretty good about yeah. this. Okay. Because I'm up. I'm gonna make myself a little emotionally vulnerable right now. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> in, Attack! <laughs> in, in 200 episodes, I do not believe that I have ever played anything from my band. On the show, don't Please believe I've ever done. Tell it. me you're about to do that. I've referenced it many times. Uh, my my misspent youth touring the world and my uh, my alternative bluegrass band, but I have never played it on the air before. And I think I feel, I feel like I'm among friends. I feel like 
now might be the time. Yes. Yeah. Please. All right. What are they called? Okay. So my band. Here's what I want you to do, uh, Mikey. Look up on YouTube. My <laughs> band was called Killbilly with a K. Sweet. Like Killbilly, but with a K. <laughs> Killbilly. <laughs> And uh, look up the uh, song Muddy Rio Grande that we, we actually shot a music video for. It. This used to play on CMT, country music television. That's awesome. But this was back before, again, the old back in my day. This was before there was like a whole genre of yeah, this, yeah. right? So it's like we were just out there doing this. And 1992? Like, Okay, we don't need to say the year, Mike. Like, <laughs> trying to find the right clip. Yeah, but that's probably it. Yeah, so let's go ahead and, <laughs> let's let's go ahead and pull it. Yeah, that's it. Hit the, uh, hit the top. Now, I'll blow it up. And uh, pay uh, particular attention to the stand-up bass player. Okay, now we can't. we got to fix the audio. Yeah, i got to fuck with the chord. It is here I lay a bullet in my chest. As I think about my life, all the stuff I tell. I think about the one I love so well. You're watching on our phone from fighting her YouTube channel. Her eyes were bright as diamonds. Her cheeks were rosy red. How she cried the night I left her. Down by Do you the recognize the guy in the I left her cut off CBGB shirt there? Yeah. So young, so full of hope. Oh, man, that's so awesome. So I'm on the muddy river to the Gulf of Mexico. Wash away my sin and sorrow. That was like a good three feet of hair there, too. That's amazing. <laughs> I think we have to we get to the mosh pit here in a second, too. Because we get that going. Let's see. So we had the banjo, the mandolin, the stand-up band. You're fucking, you're rocking it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is really chill, then you're a headbanger. <laughs> well, the funny thing was, I mean, I'm like 20. I yeah. think in this and all the other guys in the band were good like 10 years older than yeah. me so it was a weird way to grow up because it was like right out of high school I just like got in a van and you know hit the road with this Motley crew. so where is this? this this we actually shot in Dallas which was our hometown uh, at a club called Trees stay beside the one who loves you never more be straight you'll live the life and love again someday Yeah, you guys had the nice three part harmony. Okay, so I think we're gonna rock it out. You were feeling that moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Crowd goes nuts. Yes! <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was before the uh, yes. Great White Station. Are you the only one in leather pants as well? <laughs> yeah. The uh, laced up leather pants? I Are they leather? I thought you were vegan. Well, this was, Are before, they I was, this was before I was vegan. <laughs> okay. I do still have these leather pants. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, the shirt's sh gone! The at the end, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And a shirtless gimmick. Fuck, man, that was awesome. All right, there you go. That was fun. Bared a little you. of my Thank soul you. there. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was an interesting way to grow up. Did you play up. in Australia? Never in Australia. I went to a lot of time in Europe, um, <gasps> China. Went to yeah. China. Um, but never got to Australia, unfortunately. Mm. That was one. And that would have done well there. So I'm sure, um, yeah. sorry yeah. that we uh, never got to, uh, to make that. All right. Well, very cool. All right, so we did a little show and tell. We did a little musical show and tell there. You turned me on to something new. <laughs> I got to get my Whiskey Shivers catalog together. 
And uh, we got to start uh, working up your Old Crow Medicine show references for uh, Donald. For Donald. Donald. Yeah. <laughs> what about live music? Do you ever go see live music? No, much? I don't like I don't like crowds mm. and. For some reason, like, whenever I'm in big crowds, and especially if there's smoke machines, I end up really sick for, like, three days. I'm like Bubble Girl. I have a terrible immune system. Mm. So I don't, yeah, I don't. I'd much rather watch from a distance. Okay. Yeah. All right. What about what about you, Jess? you like live music? You ever? I do. I was yeah. looking at that, that three-day punk show that was here. The That's other fantastic. I, yeah. It was like it was aimed at my age group. Like yeah. I started listing some of the bands to these guys in the yeah. car and they were like, like yeah, oh, no, no drawing a blank. I'm like, no. L7, really? It really? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone just looked at me like I yeah. was oh, I grew up in fair. the bush though, so I like, I don't know a lot of bands that were kind of around. Yeah, mm, fair enough. Up. But mm. it looked great to me. I mean, most of the bands that I loved back in the day are actually mm. kind of leaning towards folk now mm. like mm-hmm. you know like bands like avail and stuff they're starting to put out yeah yeah like well it was weird for me because i i like a lot of different kinds of music so mm. obviously i grew up playing in a hillbilly band mm-hmm. um but i like hard rock i like metal but i also like like I like old cut. That's why that's cowboy and I. I mean, the stuff yeah. we, we would talk about are like old. Most of the country guys I like though are dead. Yeah, you know. But it's like, but but I I there's a wide range of stuff that I like. But I do mm-hmm. like going to see live shows a lot. You should go to Punk Rock Bowling next year if you happen to be in Las if Vegas. Yeah, yeah it I is. I go to that every year, and it is such an incredible, incredibly well-run festival. It's actually put on by the two brothers that were in Youth Brigade, if you know that old punk mm-hmm. band. And they put it on for 20 years. So wow. this is their 20th year Wow, I didn't know any of the history of it. Yeah. It just looked good. And like, it started yeah. out as an actual bowling tournament. 20 yeah, years right. ago, it was like, let's get a bowling alley, and we'll have a couple of bands play. I did wonder and about that reference. It yeah. made no sense as a newcomer. <laughs> yeah, it's grown into this huge, huge uh, uh, festival. So, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a very cool thing to see. I think we, I think we would have gone, but we've been training pretty hard. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. pretty much like, oh, I've wow. I've, like, had to nix most social things. Yeah. She's yeah. still, like, gone and done a bunch of stuff, but yeah. I haven't been involved in it you know yeah the training partner can do that yeah. you know yeah the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's how frank and i see i'm i'm frank's uh, backpack specialist i yeah. wear the backpack at the weigh-ins right yeah so i'm a professional yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah i'm sponsored dotsy sorry i only wear only yeah. carry the best um <laughs> but but yeah that's like how we were in chicago you know i mean after work was done we got him into bed then i could go out and explore yeah. but you know work first you got to get got to get the work done first now let me let me pose the most important question to to jess because jesse already passed this test oh. uh when we had her <laughs> in before but uh don't uh uh you know don't don't no help here please okay. uh jesse. don't even know what you're talking about all right about. jess um, <laughs> let me ask you uh this question uh when it comes to acdc <laughs> yes bon, bon scott or, or brian johnson <laughs> uh Look, I think Brian's done so much service, you know. Like, Bon was amazing and he's amazing for so many reasons. Uh, but I think Brian, just because of the service that he's put in, the decades that he's put in. Interesting. Yeah. That's so, a good answer. Yeah. You, you, you like the, the, the marathon runner over the sprinter in this instance. Oh, I like the sprinter and, and yeah. I like the the tightness of his pant. <laughs> well, speaking of, he, he didn't wear leather pants, but boy, he had some tight ass pants, yeah, didn't he? Was didn't amazing. He? Pull up the, uh, look up uh, uh, Let There Be Rock. Find the album cover. Just do like a Google image search of Let There Be Rock. You know, there rock. was somebody before Bond, though. Oh, yeah, there was. That was, they, he never, they I, never made a record with him. He was no. not on record, but yes, they did have a different original lead singer. Yeah, I've actually met him somehow. Really? Well, no, I have met him. Yeah. 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 I met him at a three-day ACDC convention. Oh yeah, in Wrexham, in <laughs> far north Wales. He's yeah. like Pete Best, you know, going to. He's Beatles still going there. Yeah, like he's the, yeah. he's in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. You know what? No, I mean, I, I'm now uh, uh, Jesse and I are on record as uh, if we had to pick one. Uh, uh, Brunt, can you really see? Yeah, oh, you I can. Kind of oh, blow up the. Uh, you never know whether it's a fly or a. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's the iconic image of uh Bon Scott I always think of. Yeah. Uh or the um or if look up if you want blood. Okay. That one might have a better tighter shot of his package. Um but uh, <laughs> uh I for me Oh see I never got to see Bon Scott. He was yeah. before my time as far as like going out to live shows. Yeah. So but I saw him with Brian Johnson many times. Yeah. But the thing about Bon Scott to me 
is he was a rock and roll poet. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. as far as a lyricist, to me, uh, pull up, just hit that one right there, yeah. Very much a, um, <laughs> very, much, very much like Chuck Berry. <laughs> Right. To me, he was his his lyrics were Chuck Berry esque in terms of their their poetry, mm. but but uh, uh, and and it, very impressive that the band could have the catalog and the history that they had with Bon Scott lose him and then completely reinvent. I mean, really even bigger. I mean, mm. as far yeah. as a commercial success yeah. than they were uh, the first time around. Yeah, yeah, I've. Uh, I've spent, uh, 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 I mean, I think we were talking about that with you, Jesse. You're like, you know, ACDC are like the most famous Australians ever, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why, yeah. like, I never really, like, I never listened to them growing up. That's not kind of what my parents listened to mm-hmm. or anything, you know. I at least started listening as an adult. And then um, once I started, once I realized who they were mm-hmm. and how big they were, and especially once I moved to America, it says mm-hmm. super recently, I just my respect levels went through the roof. And I used to always work out to ACDC just because I'm like, you know, they are the most famous Australians that have yeah. ever, have ever ever you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. like even yeah. being associated through a song to that was probably the most patriotic you could, you could get as an Aussie. I believe, and I have, uh, I have uh, pursued a, a study on this, uh, I believe that You Shook Me All Night Long is the most played song in the history of strip clubs. Wow. I think it's yeah. got to be over over the over years. Over cherry pie? I think so because it had a, it had a. It's definitely on the on the, uh, the well, album. <laughs> cherry pie was strong. Man, I've had that argument about cherry pie so many times. Oh. I'm like, that is a fucking stripper song. It was strong, but uh, but I think you shook me all night long. Just had such a lead on it, yeah. you know, in terms of the years. Uh, that it was. I'll tell you a fun one to go to if you're just uh, looking for strip club soundtracks. <laughs> Oh, always. Molly, Molly yeah. always on the hunt, you know. <laughs> Molly Cruz, girls, 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 yeah. name checks so many strip clubs. There's going to come a day huh. when none of them are open anymore. But if I were to go through the lyrics, I think one or two of them still are. That was huh. like, you want to talk about product placement. Yeah. I mean, it was like, it would be like a, like an MMA fighter recording a song where they just, all the lyrics are just their sponsors. Yeah. They're just throwing <laughs> out, you know, one, uh, one right after the other. <laughs> Speaking of sponsors, who do you, before we wrap this up, who do you need to mention? Because the, the modern-day UFC fighter is a little challenged on uh, fight night because you can't do the banner and all the logos yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So it's even more important than ever to thank uh, anybody who is uh, involved in supporting you. You know, to be honest, like, I don't really need to mention them mm-hmm. because, like, I have some good sponsors like um, with Monster now. Um, I got a, another really big one about to come out and then Protein House here in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I don't generally mention them in podcasts or interviews because I promote them so fucking much every day. Yeah. Like, and that that's the thing that I, you know, I think a lot of fighters don't understand is that they literally, like even the fight banner and having shit printed on your shorts and on your clothes literally gets no attention mm-hmm. at all. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that's 15 minutes of advertising, mm-hmm. but it's everything that you do leading up to that fight that really counts. And I yeah. feel like um, the way I promote and market the people that work with me is very unique and I do a really good job of it. So mm-hmm. I literally have no requirement to mention anyone in anything yeah just because of the way i promote through my social media well you didn't team me up for it or anything i was no, just I, I was just throwing it out i know there. but yeah, it's funny yeah, i did yeah. an interview this morning and, yeah. and he said the same thing he's like oh you know you can mention your sponsors at the end i'm like yeah. i don't need to do that oh you yeah know? like i yeah i promote every single one of them every single day in a like in my own unique way without yeah. having to be asked about it you know which yeah. is like a really beautiful thing now at the stage that i'm at because i used to have to be like oh i want to thank this person yeah. this person this person but now the people that i work with yeah they know like you sounded like a, a uh, like a nascar driver in your interview you ever hear those guys where they're like well no i'll tell you what we had a good day out there i was driving on my toyo <laughs> tires out there in my uh my, my ford frame and uh, i just want to thank my uh mountain dew uh tire change crew and like everybody's got a <laughs> I name drive a mountain you know? dew while yeah I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, they work them all in. Well, you know what I found was very effective with Frank's uh, sponsorships is what you do is you uh, when you're pitching the sponsor, 
uh, with Frank in particular, you just walk him around in front of the sponsor and you show him like if they're considering purchasing the butt patch area, what a wide, expansive yeah. ass that is. You know, you just Do you walk treat him like you're at a dog like show, like blue ribbon <laughs> cattle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, absolutely. You're like, listen, and he's a ground specialist too, so there's a chance that you know he gets top position. That big ass is you know yeah. up in the air for an extended period of uh, camera time, right there. All right, uh, Miss Jesse. Jess on Twitter is uh, everything where you can everything Instagram everything Jess. all that yep. all right what about you Jess you got uh, enough people stalking you or you need oh, a few you, you want to tell them what your Instagram name is my Instagram name is koala jiu-jitsu which is relatively easy to remember I yeah. guess yeah. <laughs> yeah. small bear does a jiu-jitsu that's, yeah that's me I get yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> my guy <laughs> koala Jiu-jitsu Koala is jiu-jitsu. where we can find you. Okay, now yeah. this isn't one of these private accounts where I'm going to send a request and then nothing back and they I've do been get denied, a message back right? saying your leafy said nudes. And yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's it's very oh, you're public. good for a very public. Come okay. join me. <laughs> All right. Um, well, speaking of sponsors, uh, we do need to thank uh, Low T Nation, lowtnation.com. Go to the website, call the toll-free number. You've heard Frank and I talk about it a number of times. And uh, if you are a male, if you are getting a little older, if you're getting a little slower, if you don't quite have the get-up-and-go that you used to, uh, and a lot of our listeners fall into that category, uh, oh, lowtnation.com. Well, they do. We hear from them. <laughs> They're like, hey, you know, uh, uh, you turn me on to lowtnation.com, and it kind of uh, turn my world around we got some listen to this we got some old guy that uh he's i you know guy's been married to his wife for many many years or whatever he got on low teenation and now his wife calls him the pool boy Damn. Like he sent us pictures That's of his fucking sick. ripped up abs and Doesn't everything. Doesn't even have a yeah. name. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, now just, all his Instagram and Twitter accounts are on the pool boy. Yeah, now he's just the help. Uh, so lowtnation.com. Tell him Frank and I sent you. And my buddy Dave Ellison from Megadeth uh, has his own uh, line of coffee. Where did where are my coffees? Oh, here. You guys check this out. They like this. So, uh, uh, you guys know the band Megadeth? Yes. Yeah? So, uh, uh, Dave Ellison, the bass player in Megadeth, has launched his uh, own line of coffee. He's, he's like me in the sense that uh, we, we, uh, we don't do drugs, but we drink a lot of coffee. So, he's got his own, like, rock and roll line of coffee. And uh, different <laughs> bands have their own signature roast of coffee. That's cool. No so, way. like, this is the Queensryche, or Queensryche roast right here. They've got a Skid Row roast. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty cool stuff. Frank's a big fan as well. So what you do is you go to elephantcoffeeco.com, enter the promo code phone booth, and you're going to save 10% off your entire order. All right, should I mix a little music uh, coming out of the uh, coming out of the take us out? Yeah, I actually I was so excited to bring my turntable up here. I actually, you know what I did for you, Jesse? I dusted off my old bluegrass album Ooh, collection. Jake, yeah, you, look these, at that. You're not going to hear these guys mentioned every day. Donald Cerrone won't even know who these guys are. The these are. Fiddlers. Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce you to uh, the Lonesome <laughs> Look Pine Fiddlers. Cover. Look on the back of the album cover and tell me when this was released while I'm queuing this up. That's amazing. Looks like we're working in an old radio station. This is awesome. Tell me when that was released. Forgot me glasses. No, I'm joking. What was? It Wait, was three ninety eight. It, that's that was the original <laughs> cost three ninety eight. Should be down at the bottom. Like, does it say like copyright some year or something no, like that? Maybe it's on the front. Uh, here, let me look on the record. This record right here. Uh, yeah, I don't have a year on here either. All right, well, it's someone old. used the Google machine. We're talking about like the nineteen fifties. Give me a little breakdown on the Lonesome <laughs> Pine Fiddlers, Wikium or something, uh, Mikey. Yeah. So I can get us out of here. Um, we're gonna hear a little. Uh, this was actually. A song. Uh, there we go. Lonesome Pine Fiddlers. Hit the Wikipedia. What does it say there? I can't uh, see when that. When were far. they formed? 1938 to 1966. There we go. All right. Holy that's, shit. Uh, that's yeah, fucking That's how that's long right. they existed. Damn near 100 years ago when they got together. Or Holy 80 shit. Anyway. That is almost 100 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, my, so in Killbilly, we, it was an all original band, but we did play a few covers that were so old that. You would think they were originals because yeah. uh, they were so dated at this point. So we actually played this tune, uh, Eating Out of Your Hand. I'm tired of eating out of your hand. I'm tired of getting told. These blues will leave me as of now. I'll be the one so bold. You better walk the chalk line. 
Let this poor man be, or else you find yourself alone for loose and fancy free. Eat now in your hand, you think you've got me on the strain. Oh, yeah. That's what's great for getting girls. <laughs> All right. On that, we'll let the Lonesome Pine Fiddlers uh, take us out, and uh, we will uh, say a uh, very heartfelt thank you uh, to Jessica Rose Clark for coming in here and introducing us to her to our new friend, uh, her sparring partner, Jess Fraser. Thanks for uh, coming in. Hope thank you enjoyed you. yourself. Yeah. yeah. All right, and you know what's going to happen, Jesse? You're, yeah. This this appearance is going to explode probably bigger than this is going to be the Robert Whitaker Yoel Romero two. Version, where it was even we bigger. got very heartfelt this one as well we did even last one last time we just talked about porn the yeah. whole time yeah you're right yeah. this is what they would refer to as a very special episode yeah. of yeah. <laughs> so all it's going to do is cause people to clamor for uh, more appearances from you so let's get this fight out of the way let's get a win over jessica i week from saturday june 23rd in singapore and then you got to come on and talk about a victory how about that Done. all right all right for Jess and Jesse and uh, Porn Mikey over there producing and Frank Mir joining us on the Skype machine all the way over in Australia. I'm Richard Hunter and we'll see you right back here next time on Phone Booth Fighting. Take us out there along some pine fiddlers. When I come home you're waiting the question what I'm